Hey and welcome, I'm Hammy and the Overwatch League skins are now live as are the Blizzard World skins. So what I'm going to be doing here is we're going to be going through all of the new skins. I'm going to be having a quick talk about the Overwatch League as we do so and then the first thing we need to do really is have a look at the price. So 100 free league tokens, that will get you one skin. Um, it also says receive a, play, uh, a spray and player icon for each team, interesting. Go to Overwatch League. Is that actually going to take me out of the game? No, it's not. Oh, we've got an in-game client and the 100-game token. So that's cool. One thing people were asking for was to be able to see the Overwatch League in-game. Unless we have it, we've got match schedule. We've got clickable icons with... Ah, so all of the skins are in a separate place. But the real question is how much the League tokens cost? So 100 gets you a skin. How much is 100 tokens? This is, of course, in Great British Pounds. Oh, now that is okay so remember that you've got uh, um 12 different teams in the overwatch league 12 different teams now there's 26 of course heroes in overwatch so five pounds for skin that is pretty expensive uh, if you want to deck out all of your heroes so you, this is going to be a considered purchase for me i'll be honest with you five pounds for a skin we get one skin free remember of course that there is a revenue share agreement in place so some of this money is going to the Overwatch League teams to help them. And remember, the rumoured figure for an Overwatch League spot uh, for a, a franchise, for a team to buy in, to be in the league, was about $20 million, I think it was. So the teams need to make money. Um, there's a difference between I'm perfectly happy as a person to give some of my money uh, to support my team. Now, remember, in real-life sports, you buy tickets and things like this. Um, so my initial off at that figure is not that I'm not happy to support uh, teams with finances to keep them running, keep the league running. I'm totally happy to do that. I'm just not going to be buying um, a huge amount of these to start with, I think. Uh, what I do want, uh, of course, is to kit out D.Va. I'd love all the D.Va skins, of course. Remember, 12, 12 D.Va skins uh, would be 1,200 tokens. That would be setting me back something like... £35, so roughly the, the price of a game or their amounts if I wanted to have the 12 skins. <clears throat> okay, I'll think about that. Uh, we're going to, I'm definitely going to ponder that and, uh, and have a think about that more. But um, if you're wondering about the skin prices before I jump into the skins, that's my initial thoughts on them. But remember that they're priced up a little bit maybe for a reason. And the reason is, is that this money is partially going to the teams. So let's have a look through all of the teams. We've actually got it split. I wondered how we were going to see these. So we can actually look at them by team rather than going into the roster. So we'll look at the Overwatch League skins first. And I will uh, have a little bit of a chat about uh, each of the teams as we're going through. I will do sort of a team quick preview video because I really love my esports. Um, so we will see that as well. Uh, but we'll jump into the Boston Uprising first and have a look at these skins. So Boston Uprising, uh, the beautiful blue and yellow here, that's pretty nice. I'm going to go through all of these. So as I go through each team, I'm going to talk through sort of a bit of the team as well. So they're owned by Robert Kraft. Uh, that's the New England Patriots uh, for you folks who are into your American football. Look at that very yellow bastion there. These are really nicely kitted out skins. And actually, you can have a look, look at the little weapons there. Um, I'm going to have to look at all the weapons as well, aren't I? That's going to be awesome. And a little sleep dart as well. Oh, the blue and yellow is not too different. So the Boston Uprising, it's the, uh, of course, the uh, Boston Tea Party, the Uprising, 1771, for those of you uh, uh, American history enthusiasts. Of course, the time when uh, colonists protesting against what they saw to be slightly unfair British oppression, financial terms, uh, attacked merchant ships in Boston Harbour, threw tea in the harbour, amongst other things. Hence, the Boston Uprising. That's a big waste of tea, says I, to be honest with you. Oh, that is, these, these skins have had some love put into them, I'll be honest with you. Look at that, that Boston bastion. <laughs> Very bright. Blue and yellow might not be some people's colours, but I really, really love the detail that's gone into this. And of course, my girl Diva, who I'm playing a lot of. Uh, I'm a Diva main, if anything, this season. Um, and wow. See, I'm, having said that about the price of the skins, I now really want to jump in and, uh, and get all the Diva skins now. But yeah, I'm not, not going to do that straight away. It's definitely a considered purchase. Oh, you get Boston Fist as well, like all of the pistols. This is just like the Overwatch World Cup where everything has got the nice little details on. Really, really loving that. Um, so Boston have styled themselves as kind of a Moneyball uh, type roster. That's the narrative they've gone with for sort of uh, promoting their team. Uh, Moneyball, if you're not familiar with the term uh, in terms of American sport and things, it's kind of uh, trying to, there's a, indeed a film as well, it's trying to sort of build a roster based on stats above sort of names and, and sort of known prowess. Uh, Overwatch doesn't have huge amounts of accessible stats to do that. The Moneyball, I think baseball is originally the, the Moneyball kind of team building, having a look at people's stats and having a stats based approach to building a team rather than going after the sort of the big names, as it were. 
um, blending sort of a North American, Canadian, and Korean roster uh, for Boston. People did write the roster off when they saw it a bit in the preseason, but they did all right. Uh, they sort of showed some promise against Shanghai and, and New York in the game, so they should be quite interesting to watch. Um, in terms of players to watch, um, the couple that I've sort of picked out for Boston, um, from my little bit of knowledge, uh, have a look at Gamsu. He's a tank player. Uh, he actually has a, a, an esports kind of history. Uh, he's played a bunch um, in League of Legends. So he's played for Samsung Galaxy Blue, Samsung Galaxy over in Korea. Have a couple of different lineups for League of Legends. Those of you guys who are familiar with League, look at those shuriken. Very, very cool. <laughs> Blue and yellow. <laughs> Blue and yellow. Ryuchi Monji. Loving that. Um, He's, uh, yeah, Gamsu's also played uh, for Fnatic as well, uh, playing top lane in League of Legends for Fnatic, and also played for Team Dignitas as well. Um, so he actually played over in Korea um, in the Apex series. So when I refer to the Apex series going on, Apex uh, was because OGM uh, are no longer doing Apex because of the way that Overwatch League and Overwatch contenders and things are shaking up uh, sort of Overwatch competition all around the world. Uh, but Gamsu played over in Apex for a team called Combox. Um, he had, I would say, he and his team had mixed success, uh, but he showed some signs of playing some pretty good Winston. And indeed, in the preseason and seeing him around, uh, his, his tanking has been, you know, you can see that he's got a little bit of work to do um, from a spectator point of view. Obviously, I'm, I'm no uh, professional watch player myself, um, but he's looking pretty interesting. So keep an eye out for Gamsu. I'd love to see him do well coming over and, uh, and sort of get stuck in. Uh, and someone else for Boston, uh, have a look at Mistakes, kind of a reasonably well-known Russian tracer and DPS player. Um, he is in the Overwatch Contenders. Now, Overwatch Contenders is styled to be the, the feeding league, um, sort of one of the feeder leagues for the Overwatch League, uh, where teams can sort of get stuck in. And Mistakes actually had some pretty good runs in European uh, contenders with various different teams. There's also a DPS on the, uh, the Uprising called Striker, uh, who's come over from Korea. So it'll be interesting to see how those two do team up together. Both of them play sort of Tracers. And uh, Mistakes can just put so much, like, you have different styles of Tracer play. And Mistakes just is one of those, you know, have you ever played against a Tracer that just kind of grinds, you know, your backline into submission? They're just there, they're gone, uh, until finally there's so much pressure that the, the sort of supports cave in or the peel from your tanks or supports isn't there. Mistakes is one of those Tracers. So I'd love to see how um, he gets on. It'd be interesting to see him play. Um, we will get through the rest of the Uprising skins. Oh, far out. So I'm loving, yep, yeah, a very bold um, blue and yellow play style here. And uh, a sort of very bold blue and yellow skin. Uh, the, I love the little details on this skins, both in terms of the, the logos and in terms of the color schemes, everything coming together. Look at Reinhardt, just not massive uprising on his shoulders. Uh, we're going to be seeing these everywhere uh, in game tonight. Going to be really, really awesome. Nice little hog there. Everything is... So these skins, it's worth noting, they've... Oh, just a pretty normal hook there. No blue and yellow hook, I see. There's a fair amount, fair amount of detail in these skins. They are sort of coloured up, of course, in the team colours, but there has been, you know, some some work done. A sombra's hair. I love the, the sombra hair co colour coordination as well. A little bit of a yellow stripe. Just need to check if that's on all the skins. But, you know, there is a nice amount of detail in these. So, although it's pricey for a single skin. Uh, remember, of course, that although I sort of went off at the beginning with those skin prices, um, this is direct purchase of skins in Overwatch. And... Uh, this is interesting because if Overwatch, for any reason, has to go to direct skin purchase prices, like in the blue and yellow Symmetra, actually, uh, then if any, for any reason, Overwatch has to move away from loot crates in the future. Um, people have talked, of course, about loot crates and gambling and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this is a system that will mean that at least direct purchase of skins is in the game and is possible. So this is kind of a whole new uh, system for Overwatch, although other Blizzard games, such as Heroes of the Storm, have had direct skin purchases in. Tracer looking pretty sharp there. The Uprising Pulse Pistols. Widowmaker is, yeah, blue and yellow. I, I really do, having had a look at these from the preview images and seeing them all actually popping up now, um, I'm really loving these. We could be here for quite some time in this video. So time codes are in the description below if you want to skip. I feel that's pretty important to say. Look at Winston, Winston Uprising. There's <laughs> giant cannon, that's so cool. These these are going to make Overwatch just so colourful. That's the thing. <laughs> like the, the colour palettes for all of these are pretty big and bold and, and very, very awesome. There's Uprising Zarya. And we'll, uh, we'll speed through these a little bit faster now uh, that I've got uh, 
Zenyatta is uh, coordinated with Bo- Bo- Boston Bulls. He's got Boston uh, Boston logo on every single one of his orbs. And uh, that makes the Zen... Look at that. That makes the Zen pretty cool. I really, really love that. Most awesome. Alrighty. Team number one. Okay. Um, so the next I'm going to go for, uh, because this is the order of my, um, my writings, is the Dallas Fuel. Now, the Fuel, uh, for most of you, um, if you're fans of Overwatch streaming or sort of personalities in the Overwatch kind of content scene, should need no introduction. Uh, the Fuel um, have a bunch of big streamers, a bunch of big players. Um, if you've never watched Overwatch esports, uh, esports before, you might not know who Envious are, uh, but the Fuel are uh, Envious' slot in the roster. And they've been a pretty long-term fixture in Overwatch esports for a while. Uh, Envious, of course, are in CSGO and other multiple esports professional gaming as well. So Envious uh, and sort of uh, an existing big team franchise and brand. Uh, Envious have had a few lineups. Uh, their core of uh, Taimu, who you might know, Harry Hook, Coco and Chips have been together for quite a long time. Um, they actually went to Korea and in the first season of uh, Apex Korea League Season 1, um, they actually went and won it. And then they evolved a roster uh, for Overwatch League around this. God, I love that diva. Looking just so good. So, so good. Um, so in the preseason, uh, Dallas did pretty well. They're one of these teams that are expected. They're sort of probably in the top three teams people are expecting to put on a showing based off who they have in their roster. Um, their game, with, they went 2-0. Their game with Houston, the Houston Outlaws, was a little bit closer than expected. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how sort of they've got a lot of big names. So it'll be interesting to see how you pull together all of those big names, uh, get them all a reasonable amount of playtime, keep them all happy um, and similar. Uh, they also have a few, I would say, mercurial um, talents, shall we say. Uh, in terms of players to watch, of course, Seagull will probably need no introduction for a bunch of you. Uh, the very popular streamer that he is, um, known well in Overwatch for multiple seasons, pretty much throughout all of Overwatch's history. Uh, good at flex DPS, throwing the projectiles around and similar. Um, known for his Junkrat recently, but also his Farah. Also playing Genji. Uh, and yeah, just a whole bunch of... Uh, heroes that he can play so a very useful asset for the fuel uh i'm going to mention xqc if you watch i watch on twitch you'll be familiar with xqc um certainly uh, an excellent winston uh and has some great tank play uh, i'm going to call him a maverick or a mercurial talent it'll be interesting to see if he adapts to life uh under the public eye and in the professionalism of the overwatch league um so i hope that he does well because uh, his Winston play is certainly great to watch. Also, you can't really talk about the field without talking about Taimu, um, his Widow play, but also his hit scan and DPS in general. Um, shouting out other players, you've got uh, the Korean Effect, who just has some ridiculous tracer and DPS skill. And I'm also going to shout out Mickey as well. Um, I play a lot of D.Va myself, as I've said earlier. I love watching the different styles of D.Va. Um, I wouldn't say that I can assess all Overwatch heroes and pro players and teams on terms of play style for different heroes. But because I've played a reasonable amount of her, um, I like to think I can see a few different play styles. And I love Mickey's style, which is kind of, I'd say, really calculated hyperactivity <laughs> for Mickey. Um, he is everywhere uh, at the same time. But if you watch his play, you can see that he's everywhere with excellent reason and the way that he plays around his team. I love that Moira Fuel skin. Cool. Look at that. Really, really <laughs> Arisa, Arisa Fuel is really, really sweet as well. Just look at that. She's big and bold and blue and she don't care. And she's got logos all over her stuff. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Fire. So you can see the trends, of course, where you see the logos as to where they sit and how the colour schemes come together. So the fuel is just like, you know, the combo of colours. Um, set a little bit more understated but tasteful. And uh, a nice little logo fitting in there as well. A big fat Reinhardt skin there as well. Reinhardt's rocket hammer. We are, of course, going through 300 skins here. Um, so I'm going to make sure that I try and keep the pace up as much as I can. And remember, if you want to skip to a different team, I'm always going to talk about the teams to start with at the beginning of each team section. I do use the time codes in the description below, um, which I will put there as well. Sombra, Sombra. Yes, yeah, so you do have a little colour coordination, I think, along the head stripes, which you need to have a look at. Um, I don't know whether these, are, I, I would imagine that golden guns don't factor and if you wear a team skin, uh, you're not going to get um, uh, a golden weapon. I don't think these will have a golden edition because they probably colour up not only the team colours, uh, but also the logos perhaps a bit as well. I don't know, I could be wrong. And even the teleporter base as well. 
<laughs> fuel torp. <laughs> it's, it's like with these colours, you see the little rotating wheel at the back on Torb's, uh, on Torb's backpack that sometimes I just don't notice. So it's interesting how the colours pick these out a little bit more, I would say. Right down to the packs. So remember, of course, that when you watch the Overwatch League, um, and I'll talk a bit about the Overwatch League and the format as well as we go through as well, I think. So I will do that after I talk about the teams. I'll talk about little things to do with the Overwatch League as well. Winston. Chunky fuel cannon there. Azaria, ready for duty. And there is Zen. Okay. And of course, with his orbs, orbs with the logos. I think that's really cool. Like with Zen, all of the orbs with all the logos on. Just so, so sweet. Okay, uh, in my alphab alphabetized, he says, order, we're going to go the very bright Florida Mayhem. Um, now, this um, is uh, representing Florida Mayhem or representing Miami and Orlando. Um, now, this is the Misfits slot. So if you're familiar with Misfits, if you watch um, League of Legends, you might know that Misfits had a pretty good run uh, with the roster. So I think they went pretty deep. Did they go to the quarterfinals, maybe the semis? I think it was at least the quarters um, of the League of Legends World Championships last year. But Misfits also have um, a good Overwatch. Wow, gar <laughs> like the mayhem is garish. Uh, some people have slightly unfairly labeled it the popular fast food restaurant color scheme. But I like it. It's sunny. It's sunny and colourful. And hey, it like, I like my beaver. So I, I like. I, I'm liking all the diva skins. What can I say? I've got a serious. I've got a serious uh, bias <laughs> towards any diva skins at all. With, with my orange, uh, orange little pistol. Wow, a bold doom fist there as well. Um, so uh, Misfits have had a, a grounded history in Overwatch for quite some time. Uh, this roster, uh, with the European core of a Misfits roster, uh, it's actually got a chunk of uh, Overwatch World Cup experience as well from the last two years. So do not underestimate the mayhem. In the preseason, they actually lost uh, both for the two games they played. They lost to San Francisco Shock um, as well as the Dallas Field. Um, but there's definitely, I think, a little bit more to come from this roster. Uh, they are actually just a six-man roster, and bear that some of the Overwatch League squads uh, go up to a squad of 12 big. So this is actually a six-man roster. Um, so there's no room for illness. <laughs> if you can hear why my voice is a little bit cracky, um, I have had a, a bit of a Christmas flu and a bit of a Christmas sore throat. So my apologies if there's the odd voice break. I know how much you love um, spotting those uh, when people are talking in YouTube videos too. Um, but... If you have a six-man roster, you have no dilemmas whatsoever about playing and training that same roster day in, day out. You don't have to keep multiple people happy. So balancing things over, um, that's going to let a team with training, with practice and experience bond together. And they already have pre-existing synergy, pre-existing practice as well. God, that's a bright McCree pistol, isn't it? A bright May as well. But I think the yellow and orange kind of suits May pretty nicely too. Well, uh, May's skin design with the big areas also has like lots of bright areas on it as well. Always works well for colour schemes, I think. Uh, players to watch in the Mayhem. Well, it's too easy to always call out DPS players. Um, but I'll call out who I'm familiar with. Uh, you couldn't talk about the Mayhem without talking about Tavik. Highly experienced uh, on multiple different DPS heroes. World Cup experienced as well. Uh, runs a great stream. Go and check him out over on Twitch. And also, have a look at Logics. There are so many good tracers and DPS players. And of course, DPS sometimes get all of the, the flash and all of the spotlight and attention. Uh, but Logix is very, very solid at Tracer. Um, he, has, he has come into his own, particularly in the preseason, and he has been very well rated in Europe for quite some time now. So keep an eye out for Logix. Um, as we keep on going through these skins, I'm just going to have a little bit of a chat about just the league structure in general here as we have a look at Arisa. So 12 teams, um, two divisions. You've got the Pacific uh, Division, uh, and you have the um, East Coast Atlantic Division as well. They play at slightly different time zones. So for teams like the London Spitfire, uh, of course, the time zones are going to be a little bit different. So, of course, us in London can tune into a London uh, team game at a reasonable time. And now the reason that that's important is because for this first season, it's all being played out of Los Angeles, uh, the Blizzard Arena, and all of the teams have moved to LA for this first season. Um, from season two onwards, teams have to have a local presence and local engagement. With a, uh, the, the form of that and the form that that's being taken is yet to be confirmed. Uh, but it is, of course, um, uh, people may well be playing in their local areas. They need to be doing stuff in their local areas as well. Uh, four stages in the first season of Overwatch League. Um, those are six weeks long each with little breaks in between. There's then a post-season playoff, which I think is around about July, uh, where the winner of the first season will be crowned. 
And then also there's an All-Star Weekend after that. Now, All-Star Weekends are, are common in a few other competitive games uh, where basically you have sort of, you know, MVP teams coming together. Um, you have sort of some silly and fun modes. It's kind of like a spectator fan event for a little bit of fun as well. Glory, double mayhem logos, just when you look at this, right down to the little photon projector. Okay, and let's finish going through Sombra. Sombra, Sombra suits bright colours as well. Uh, actually, not the coordination on the headpiece that I'm seeing, so maybe I just saw that in the first skin. Um, coordinating Sombra's hair might have been a step too far in all of the skins, who knows. Um, but yeah, I thought like the little bands on top of her skins uh, were going to be on top. Symmetra really suits bright colours as well. Mayhem Symmetra. Very, very nice. <coughs> Pardon me for the odd cough here and there. Bright Torb as well. Nice little turret. <laughs> nice little armor pack. Mayhem Tracer. It's kind of interesting with the fleece on the Tracer sleeves. Like, you know, the fleecy look on top of the colors. But the, I think having the dark color, like almost like the, the, the darker red color of leather on Tracer works pretty nicely. <laughs> Widowmaker. It's so funny seeing bright colors with the Widowmaker. And then the, uh, and then the blue skin as well. She's got a Mayhem tattoo, of course. Uh, note the tattoo on the back of the Widowmaker skins. Um, syncs up with her too. Big orange Winston with his big orange weapon. Pink works quite well for Zarya there, I think. But can't forget looking at the, the the outrageous cannon. I already know what I'm gonna buy with my first uh, with my three hundred credits. I already know. We have to wait till we get there. Okay, next up, alphabet wise, we're going to the Houston Outlaws. Um now they're green. Now there's a reason that they're green because um, not only are they representing Texas. Oh, I like the I like the Outlaws color scheme. I don't think there's one that I I, I dislike out of all of the color schemes. There are certainly my favourites, which we'll come on to. Um, but the reason they're green is because the Houston Outlaw are Optic. Now, if you don't know Optic Gaming from esports, um, you probably certainly would have heard of a Call of Duty or Counter Strike. I'm sure. And Optic have got a, a long history as a gaming organization in console esports but also they have a csgo team as well they've they've gone into pc a bit more recently but they've always had a long history in console uh this is uh, a, a roster that's very much a blend of um western players i would say um they actually have three american world cup players in their roster um so some teams we have in the overwatch league are kind of all korean some are sort of a mixture of everything everywhere over and uh, some are very Western. So this is a Western core of American. Um, there are lots of players in this roster who have played together on previous teams. Uh, there's some good little existing synergies in the team, which is always a good thing to watch out for. You know, the differences and things that split up these rosters. Have the players played together before? Or have they got existing history? And actually, a bunch of these players play together on a team called FNRGFE, uh, which is X Fanatic for the F. NRG, NRG Esports, which we'll talk about in various terms later, and Gale Force Esports. Uh, combine those three names together, and, and that is how you get um, <laughs> that name of that particular team that used to exist. So yeah, it had a fairly distinctive logo as well, a sort of a Warus a sort of corn dog <laughs> was the logo for that team. Um, so if you Google FNRGFE, uh, you'll see exactly what I mean about distinctive. How was their preseason? Well, uh, they did lose a couple of games, but they were to two of the strongest teams in the competition. The Dallas Fuel and Seoul Dynasty, the Korean, uh, well, one of several Korean teams, but Seoul is representing Korea uh, sort of as a city officially, of course. So I think they're ones to watch, you know, as well. I would keep an eye on them. I would not write them off because of those two losses in any way, shape or form. They've got some really, really interesting players. It's interesting to come to Lucio. Players that I think are going to be interesting to keep an eye on from what I've seen. Have a look at Barney. He has got very rapid, fast action Lucio plays. One of those people who's all over the place. But being in the right place at the right time, you can argue that any any Overwatch player has to do that. But uh, Lucio in particular, like the way he can peel, the way like Barney peels, the way that he looks after some of his teammates and DPS when they're low, like supports peeling for DPS. It's always good to see a good Lucio looking after teammates who are about to die with a combination of boops, healing, a little bit of damage, pressure, speed boosts, flicking between that speed boost. And, and between healing and just keeping players alive. Like Lucio can peel for his team um, as much as, you know, tanks and DPS can occasionally keep their supports alive. So keep an eye on Barney. Um, cool Matt, I always like talking about Diva players. I love the color scheme for the, can I just say, like this sort of 
you know, the dark greeny, blacky, and and the, the the yellow aspects. That's a sweet mercy skin. Black watch eat your heart out. And I won't get distracted. I'll talk about Kumat again. So Kumat uh, as a diva, um, I love love his prediction positioning. He's more sort of a calculated diva in terms of the play styles. Um, and then keep an eye on Spree. Now Spree. Um, can play a bunch of stuff, but he's known for playing a bit of Zarya. And have you ever played against a Zarya? He seems to have their ult pretty much every five seconds or like every half minute, and you wonder why Gravitons are flying at you so, so quickly. Yeah, that's Spree. Um, his bubble timing, uh, his maintenance of charge as well. He's one of those people who just, a Zarya, hoovers their way through uh, a bunch of stuff um, and always seems to be high charge and always seems to be throwing out those grabs so, so quickly. Keep an eye on Spree. Uh, I love watching good tank players. Um, we will have a look and see how the Outlaws do. So coming into a little bit more about the Overwatch League. Well, as I'm talking to you and as this video has been released, it has finally been announced that the Overwatch League is going to be on Twitch. Um, people were wondering whether it was going to be on uh, Activision Blizzard's owned MLG player. Activision Blizzard, the company, own MLG. And MLG have for long had their own um, sort of system of uh, broadcasting um, and spectating and Simmer. So was it going to be on their platform? Uh, the preseason was run on MLG. Uh, it was not on Twitch. So this deal has only been put together not too long ago. But with it coming to Twitch brings the big audience, like for the Overwatch World Cup. It's where most people are, to be honest, right now, if you have a look at where people are watching live esports and streaming. So it's good that the Overwatch League is going to be on Twitch from tomorrow. Now, the other thing that that actually means is that cheer rewards uh, have been mentioned as something that could be coming uh, into uh, Overwatch um, as well. So how that works, now this already exists, if you want to see how cheer rewards work, have a look at Blizzard's cheer reward program for Heroes of the Storm. Now you may have seen on my channel for lore, interactions and voice lines, I cover Heroes of the Storm, I've got a little series that goes on there every now and then, uh, which I really really enjoy doing. Um, the Overwatch heroes get new voice lines and voice work in Heroes of the Storm, so you should totally check out my playlist of those videos if you want to see additional voice lines and interactions. Remember that the Nexus in Heroes of the Storm is not canon, uh, but they have little fun jokes and things. Oh, that's a really nice, look. The, the, uh, the little bull the logo uh, for Texas on the back of Widowmaker. I love the fact that Widow's tattoo changes. Um, there is nice detail in the, the colour and thought and work into these skins, um, which is just so, so sweet. Um, but yes, I was talking about cheer emotes. And the reason, uh, basically, on Twitch you can buy um, currency to cheer. And um, if you don't use Twitch very often, um, you can basically cheer for different teams. And if you cheer for that team, not only does some uh, value of the amount of money, because you do spend money um, to buy sort of currency to cheer, but if you then cheer for a particular team, then it can be tracked. Uh, towards that particular team. So the teams will also get um, some funding from you cheering them. And remember that Overwatch League salaries per player can be up to $100,000, $150,000. Some of them have been reported to be. Um, uh, the teams have bought the slots for about $20 million. Um, I want Overwatch Esports to be healthy for a long period of time. So I have no issue um, with as much or as little as it makes sense for you individually. Some people will spend nothing. Some people will back their favorite teams. So these mechanics existing is a good thing for the Overwatch League uh, for the long term, a good thing for Overwatch eSports and Overwatch as a game. We want to have these mechanics here, whatever you think of the prices. Um, so cheering on Twitch is another way that you can support your favorite team. And Blizzard have said that there could be specific content um, that ties to cheering for particular teams or using cheers on Twitch. I'll talk more about what that kind of content can be after we've had a look at the London Spitfire. So, the London Spitfire as a team. Well, as you know, I'm British, so I'm, of course, I'm probably going to support a few teams, but I'm certainly supporting the Spitfire uh, as one of my teams. The London Spitfire are an interesting team, um, um, so or an interesting organisation, and they have certainly a bright and colourful scheme. I'm going to need to get some Spitfire skins. Look at Spitfire on there. Um, I don't think I need to explain why they're called the Spitfires, but if you're not familiar with the Spitfire, a beautiful aircraft, uh, still flying today in the UK with various... Um, sort of um, aircraft and historic preservation societies and engineering groups keeping old British planes flying. But certainly the symbol of British resistance um, and the defence of Britain in World War II in the Battle of Britain, where sadly so many lost their lives. But the Spitfire um, was certainly uh, keeping the German Luftwaffe uh, out and massive fights over Kent and over the English Channel. Um, sometimes on a daily, sometimes on a weekly, sometimes on a very frequent basis during the Battle of Britain. Uh, if Britain had lost air control 
uh, of the Battle of Britain, then the Germans would have most certainly had free skies uh, to invade and invasion of Britain was being planned if uh, Britain had been invaded. Then if you have a look at Man in the High, is it Man in the High Tower or Man in the High Castle? I can't remember the name of the series on Netflix, but there are several um, series and several alternate histories. Like writers love to think, particularly in Britain and other places, what would have happened if Britain had fallen in the Battle of Britain and the Spitfire? Uh, and the brave men and women who both crewed those planes it was certainly a, um, you know, a, a key part of Britain and European history, perhaps world history, uh, being the day they were today. Very, of course, that Britain was, of course, the staging point uh, for uh, the D-Day landings and the eventual fight back uh, from America and many different places uh, against uh, the Nazi occupation of Europe. Um, so, yes, um, the Spitfire certainly a very sensible um, and linked name. Uh, to do with Britain. So that uh, certainly resonates to me. I'm sure it will for a lot of other British people as well. I, lo I love this diva skin as well, going off the serious history. I love my history as well as I love my gaming, <laughs> by the way, in case you haven't guessed. Um, so there is Diva. So let's talk a bit about the uh, let's talk a bit less about the Spitfire and a bit more about the actual Spitfire and team uh, and the roster. So Spitfire is Cloud Nine owned, uh, um, C9 Jack Jack Etienne. Cloud Nine, you'll know from League of Legends, CS:GO. Um, they've had uh, Overwatch rosters before in Overwatch esports. Um, so Cloud Nine are a brand that will need no introduction. Uh, uh, well, it's, it's so colourful in certain cases. Um, if you if you watch any kind of gaming or pro or professional gaming or esports, you'll know who Cloud Nine are. But this is the Cloud Nine owned slot. Um, now, what happens if you go to the most competitive London Spitfire on the back of Junkrat's tyre? There. What happens if you go to the most competitive, hard fought, arguably high quality Overwatch competition in the world? Um, Korean OG and Apex, as I've mentioned before. What happens if you just buy almost straight out two of the top rosters who have won Apex in the last few seasons, and then you add a couple of excellent Korean up-and-coming talents? <laughs> then you get the London Spitfire. So the London Spitfire is all Korean, uh, in spite of representing London. Um, not a single British player, but the organisation is planning to remedy that, uh, working with local events in the UK. Um, the Overwatch Contender series that I've mentioned they're looking to recruit UK talent through their run UK tournaments. So I'm sure this will change. But to start with, we have a lot of the best of career uh, and the best of the best league in career coming together to play as the London Spitfire. So it should be very interesting. Uh, in the in local news as well, I don't know if any of you guys uh, watch CSGO or maybe Dota. Um, you might be familiar with Red Eye, uh, Paul Challoner. Uh, he uh, is working, uh, he and his uh, a company that is set up are working with uh, the London Spitfire to do grassroots um, sort of tournaments and activity, content and sort of uh, community engagement and, and sort of get the, uh, even though the first season of uh, Overwatch League is being played over in Los Angeles. Uh, the Spitfire are looking to do a lot of events and stuff and content and local stuff with the Spitfire here in the UK. So if you're from the UK, keep an eye out for that. Uh, Red Eye is vastly experienced in esports. He has hosted the International for Dota, the biggest, most valuable prize pool event in all of gaming and esports, like millions and millions of dollars of prize pool in that. Uh, he is also well known in CSGO and a bunch of games and has a huge commentating, hosting and esports set of experience. I'm excited that he is working with the Spitfire. I'm looking forward to seeing what he and his company and the Spitfire do for, you know, promoting the Spitfire here in the UK. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, that should be really, really interesting. Uh, and then, of course, from season two, loving the Mercy Spitfire as well. Oh, so good. See, I have to resist. I have to resist just spending £35 right now. Uh, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. I need to, need to be good. Um, and just getting a, a whole 26 skins, just getting 26 skins for the Spitfire and one. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I know who I'm going to buy my first for. It's either going to be for the Spitfire or Cell Dynasty Diva because I just love the, the black and gold color scheme that those guys have. I will come on to that as well. Okay, so the Spitfire, we've talked about a bunch. As you can see, they're, they're kind of my home team. Fire, fire, yep, justice running from above. Spitfire is definitely going to have to be doing that. Um, so the two teams that London Spitfire have bought, Cloud9 have bought, uh, are Kongdu Panthera. Um, so it's most of that roster. And then two players called Fu Fury and I'm going to call him Nus. Nus or Nus. N-U-S. And then GC Busan, um, who were the latest Overwatch champions. Uh, and they did... Uh, they did um, they, they literally qualified for Apex, and then they went all the way through and won the thing. So GC Busan uh, were the latest and greatest, and um, you know a real story last uh, season in Korean Apex. I've been watching a bunch of Apex over the last few seasons. Uh, although I love my lore, I do love my esports as well, uh, from a, certainly a spectator's point of view. 
Um, look at Roadhog's big London belly tattoo. Again, it's these things that sort of stand out when you actually um, you look at them a little bit more in a little bit more detail. Loving the Spitfire there. So the hook doesn't get an, an additional skin as well. But yeah, Roadhog, cool. It's bright, bright and beautiful between the sort of. I'm slightly colourblind. I'm going to call it sort of like bluey and orangey colours combined together. Uh, how did the Spitfires do in the preseason? Well, we went 1-1 uh, due to pretty much... The reason for this was they kind of mixed and matched um, rosters. So, like, in one game, um, I say one game uh, that we played, uh, the first match that we played, uh, for one map, we'd have one roster. For the other map, we had the other. So we didn't have a consistent team, like, in the first game of preseason playing through, like, an entire map, if that makes sense. And, indeed, a lot of the teams with larger rosters, like the Spitfire, use the opportunity to mix and match and swing players around. So you see now Sombra has the colour coordination there. So some of the skins have got the colour coordination on her hacking bands on top, which is quite cool. Spitfire Sombra, loving it, loving it very much. And Symmetra as well. So we went 1-1, one, one, um, but with the experimentation, um, I think that, the, you know, even my, my personal bias for London lineup aside, the Spitfire have a strong set of players. Um, who to watch? Well, you could watch any bunch of these guys. Uh, and you, this will be the case for, you know, a lot of the Overwatch League teams. You know, I'm just picking some players, I, you know, the, the players that I've left out in many cases. Um, so this is personal preference uh, as, as much as anything else. And you have different people, different analysts, different fans who will have all their different kind of preferences. Um, have a look at the DPS duos from the two different teams. These survived intact. So for Kongdu Panthera, who used to be C9 Kongdu. Um, these are all part of London Spitfire. Have a look at the duo of Birdring and Rascal. Um, you will see these two playing together pretty frequently, I would imagine. Uh, they can just put out some disgusting tracer play in general overall DPS. Um, for the GC Busan uh, DPS duo, take a look at Profit and Hureg. Um, Profit um, really, really started putting up numbers in the final of Apex Season 4 that GC Busan went on and won. I think that was latest... Um, latest apex he put up like a he was just slaying his tracer and absolutely not dying at all he was like mon he, he put together like a monstrous kill streak run in one of the final games he was just popping off so ridiculously um widow maker here yeah maybe that's just my color scheme but yeah that's almost a that almost goes flesh tone with widow maker there that's a little bit controversial i would say i don't know maybe that's just my my monitor settings or color settings anyway moving swiftly on um, and then the London roster there as well, um, looking beautiful there. Um, players to watch. Hey, we've almost got to the end of this. I'll talk about cheers at the end of the next. Um, so, Spitfire, I've got two awesome tanks. Um, keep an eye on Fisher and Gesture. Um, between uh, their main tanking play and a little bit of Winston and Diva play, uh, they have some, they've, they've put together some sweet tanking performances. And finally, I always get his name a little bit wrong, but I'm going to go for Hagopen. Um, Hegu Poon, Poon, it's P E U N. Um, he has just ridiculous Zenyatta aim, and you want to watch the Zenyatas in the Overwatch League. Um, Zenyatas um, in pro play, uh, not only with their discords, but also covering corners and zoning corners with fully charged right click um, Zenyatta orb picks. His um, Zenyatta orb aim is ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. And yeah, keep an eye on the Spitfire. Um, they just have, if we, they get the rosters together, if they, they get the play synergy together, if they work out who their lead lines are and how they mesh everyone together. Um, of course, with rosters of 12 or larger rosters, you can have different rosters on different maps, which will be a pretty exciting thing to see as well. Okay, next thing up, the Los Angeles Gladiators, um, as we flick through these. So this is Stan Kroenke. Um, for you American football fans, that's the LA Rams. Um, if you are a real football, ooh, controversial I know, but hey, I'm British, I'm always going to call football football. Um, he's a part investor in Arsenal. And with that sort of kind of dark purple here, with those little gladiator helms on, looking very, very good as well. Um, so in the preseason, um, they went 1-1. Uh, they did beat, they beat the Spitfire, but they lost to LA Valiant as well. Um, they've got an interesting mix of players from different places. Um, people to watch, um, a lot of you might know Shaw for from streaming and similar. Now, he has been high-level DPS, I would say, since Overwatch closed beta. Um, known for his fire play. Um, also a bunch on Tracer uh, and McCree recently as well. Actually picked up Widow a bunch recently. Oh, I love the dark colours on, on this Diva skin. You see, I need to resist buying skins for the Spitfire and, uh, and all Diva skins. 
resist, Tammy, resist. Um, but yes, yeah, so Shawfall, keep an eye on him. Um, you, we have seen in the in the preseason a bunch of people, kind of uh, a bunch of teams bringing in projectile specialists. So for control maps where Faras and Mercies have been, while well, Mercy has been so strong, have been run a whole bunch. Uh, for example, we've seen Seagull um, being run on Oasis um, only and being brought in kind of as an Oasis and in control map specialist. Expect Shawfall to be used in that kind of way potentially as well. Uh, where, like Oasis um, Gardens, you can run afar a high, high in the sky, uh, lapping over that sort of middle, uh, overlapping over that middle kind of uh, dividing piece uh, between the middle of the Gardens map and the actual control point. So keep an eye out for Shawfall. Um, also, throwing out, uh, I play a lot of tanks and a bit of support, so let's give the support some shout outs. Have a look out for Big Goose and Shaz. Now, these two come together from a Giganti. Now, they are won the latest Overwatch contenders in Europe. So this is a support duo with some existing synergy who have played together. Um, Shaz actually showed some really sweet zen um, in the preseason, which was just in December 2017 of just gone. Uh, and again, uh, positioning, getting those picks, getting the aim. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what these two can do in terms of pulling together and anchoring their team together as they push forward um, in Overwatch League. Okay, so as we go through the rest of the Gladiator skins, I'm going to finally talk a bit about those cheers and about what they can be. So in Heroes of the Storm, uh, if you cheer for a team, if you cheer a certain value of cheer, uh, you can unlock specific mounts. I think there might have been specific skins, icons, and similar. So basically, cheer more, get more. And of course, that is spending money. But remember, some of those team, um, some of the money that you spend on cheering, like some of the money you spend on skins, goes in a revenue share towards the teams to help them exist. Um, and we want franchises to exist and, you know, be a business um, uh, and continue the Overwatch League. Because I really enjoyed the preseason. Uh, I don't know about you. If you watched it, um, you can watch it all on overwatchleague.com. Uh, and healthy Overwatch esports, nice little gladiators tattoo in the middle there, is good for Overwatch, good for the future of our game that we love. So we want that to be going on and working a whole bunch. So you can cheer on Twitch and you can potentially get these custom uh, rewards in future, which I'm really looking forward to as well. Uh, that's not actually out right now. There was just an Overwatch League press conference today where all of this was announced and they said that cheers are something that could potentially come in in future. So custom cheers, custom rewards, TBC. I'm really loving this uh, purple gladiator scheme for Symmetra as well. Purple top. You've kind of got like the very garish color schemes and then the sort of subtle blends of, I'm not going to call them understated, but the really nice sort of purples, dark blues, um, you know, sort of the gunmetal grays and darks. So like, look at that tracer uh, all matched together with the nice little colors as well. Five pounds a skin. So how does five pounds a skin? Is that like seven bucks a skin? That'll probably be five or six euros a skin. Is dollars a little bit less? I can't quite remember. I've forgotten my conversion rates. So is that six, maybe uh, six, maybe seven bucks a skin, or it might it might be five dollars uh, a skin as well. It, they might just keep the the amount sort of not set in terms of conversion value, but sometimes that happens. And something that's five pounds in the UK is five dollars, but of course then it's slightly more expensive for us uh, Brits and Europeans. We shall see. Uh, you do have to give me if my voice is going a little bit. I'm just going to take a little drink, and then we are going to jump into the Next team on the list, which is the other team in LA, the LA Valiant. There we go. You don't want to hear me coughing into a microphone. Right, next, the LA Valiant. The green and gold. Kind of, I'm going to say that's a green. Okay, so uh, the logo. Now, if you take a look at the esports organization called Immortals, um, you might recognize this green. Um, this sort of colory scheme, because this is Immortals' slot. Now, Immortals had a uh, Overwatch lineup, but they also uh, play in League of Legends, they play in CSGO, and a bunch of other stuff as well. Now, Immortals, uh, the lineup, uh, actually, did they... Um, I need to check my memory. I think they may have won Season 0 of Contenders, uh, Overwatch US Contenders, the American Contenders, because there was American in Europe. Uh, but then they kind of struggled a little bit in tournaments afterwards. Um, a mix of Western and Korean talent on this roster. Uh, they are a pretty chunky squad. Uh, the core of the Immortals lineup was kind of kept together as well. 
Um, so there is a bit of existing team synergy in this lineup too. They did actually go two nil in the preseason. Um, they beat the Gladiators in the LA rivalry, and then they had a pretty close game in places against the San Francisco Shock. Players you should have a little bit of a look at. Um, have a look at Unko. Um, Unko comes uh, from the all French lineup uh, that kind of got disbanded before the Overwatch League, called Rogue, who were very very strong in Europe and generally globally as well. Um, in terms of a little bit of action. Also, Kariv. Um, I love watching Kariv playing Arna. He's one of those supports who can use Arna and supports kit to their absolute max, throwing down the precision sleep dart at the same time as a, a nice sort of healing and denying Arna grenade. Um, in terms of a couple of other players, have a look at Agilities. Canadian DPS, his Genji play um, lit up people's highlight reels recently, um, particularly at the Overwatch World Cup. I think he got something like the Esports Player of the Year at the Esports Awards with his Genji Blade. Uh, you may have seen the highlights. I think it was on Watchpoint Gibraltar, if my memory serves me correctly. And last but not least, it would be a shame not to shout out British existing players. So, my boy Numlocked, a uh, British main tank. Uh, I think he came from League of Legends, if my memory serves me correctly. Uh, he was ex-NRG. Now, NRG, who I've mentioned and we'll talk about in future, they were a very, very hyped roster. Uh, they had Seagull on them for a spell. Um, uh, they kind of had cohesion and playing problems, keeping a lineup, training, getting together in events. Love the edge of the McCree Valiant skin there. They never really delivered. Um, they had a, a bit of a um, you know issue in terms of getting game time in, coaching lineups, sort of securing their lineup and similar. Um, but Numlock had a pretty good um, contenders season uh, with Envision. Uh, he plays Reinhard and Winston. Uh, he has a very recognisable uh, laugh if you've ever heard him on streams or on comms. Um, and I'm looking forward to British representation, both in terms of players and London Spitfire in the Overwatch League. Numlock, keep an eye on him. He's going to come good. Uh, a beautiful Arisa design. Yeah, that kind of works with the Arisa existing palettes as well. Um, I need to see what happens with the golden weapons here too. Yeah, fire this kind of green and gold as well. Beautiful looking. Remember, of course, 26 heroes looking through all the skins. This is a bit of a long vid. You want to skip to a different team. Um, you have a look at all of the different um, teams in the time codes underneath. Bit of Reinage. I've got Ryan's hammer. Please don't judge me. A bit of van in there as well. I'm going to go a bit quicker with the skins now. Um, so that we can keep them moving on through. The Valiant. The Valiant. So yeah, that's kind of like the local derby and the two different LA teams to start with. Sombra's got a bit of colour coordination as well. Some, the Sombra skins, I don't know. I, li I like playing Sombra as a hero are just pretty sweet for me in general. So these are actually interesting. They're from smarter people than I. These actually appear to be semi-procedurally generated in a sense as well. Like there's there's been a lot of work that have gone into the models and then you know the colours and logos and everything are sort of mapped on top in a bit of a different way to other Overwatch skins. There's been a lot of effort in that background process, I think. Um, I need to technically look at the, the clever modelers um, and data miners and people who are familiar with code and the way that the Overwatch files are put together. Seems like the, the, um, the way that these work is because you have home and away uh, strips as well. So these are like the home colors, but then the away team had kind of like these sort of white palette skins as well. Um, so they simply need to be sort of like, ov like overlapped and generated in game uh, rather than having sort of individual models for everything. Um, so yeah, there's been a lot of work that has gone into these uh, in a technical ways that I can't possibly fathom them. I've probably not done that justice in terms of how I've explained it. So I'll go and come back to that in future. Okay, there's Zarya looking very, very sweet as well. We can't, can't not look at their weapon. I know I've missed at least one weapon here. And some, of, some people are going to be sad by that. I do apologize. Zen, of course. The way I get so excited about these orbs every single time as well. <laughs> okay, right, we're getting there. So how many teams do we have left to go? We have one, two, three, four, five teams left to go. Okay, we're sort of over halfway through. Let's keep going. The New York Excelsior are going to be next up. So the organization history of the New York Excelsior. Um, these are owned by Jeff Wilpon. So if you're familiar with the New York Mets, American sports-wise, these are the Mets, Mets owner. So you've got a few American um, sports and franchise owners who are already existing in these. And I like a very bright color scheme here as well. Uh, but again, going together very nicely. I'm going to call it like a ready, ready in a dark 
ready dark red color and a darky purple i'm not good at colors if these colors are wrong beautiful diva skin please do not judge me for my color identification abilities i just know what i like the look of um this is predominantly the korean rust uh, luxury watch blue uh and then with arc and libero two very very talented players tacked on the end uh, this roster was regularly very competitive in the last few seasons of Apex. Um, and in the preseason, they beat Boston Uprising. They then lost to Seoul Dynasty. Um, so a little all-Korean rivalry there. But Excelsior are another, another one of the very Korean lineups, um, all-Korean players. And they will be seen as one of the teams, along with Fuel and Seoul Dynasty, uh, as the teams to beat. Players to watch. Uh, well, there's some awesome players to keep an eye on in the New York Excelsior. So I'm certainly going to be watching their games. As a, as a, I'll have a couple of teams I'm rooting for, I think, more than others. But there are teams that I'm definitely going to watch the games of, um, whether they're sort of one of my main teams or not. And the Excelsior is definitely one of those. Keep an eye on Mano. Now, above a lot of good Korean tanks in the 2017 Overwatch World Cup Korean lineup, who won it for the second year in a row, Mano was picked as the Korean main tank. And... One of the reasons for this that the selection, the Korean selection committee gave was they said that, well, we could take Miro as a Winston. We could take uh, Fisher, uh, you know, maybe in some other ways as well. But they decided to actually plump for Mano um, as sort of their main go-to tank. And the reason for that was they said his flexibility and his such a high level on both um, Winston and Reinhardt. Now, of course, Winston, your dive tank and your sort of more mobility peeling tank. Reinhardt, your front up shielding, um, shield based pushing tank and the Korean selection team of all of the good Korean tanks in one of the best or the best Overwatch player producing region in the world depending on how you want to look at it your opinion may vary um, Mano is called out as being uh, not only an excellent tank but also a really excellent flexible tank in what can be seen as two different disciplines you do have specialist Overwatch tanks who main shield tanks or main dive tanks um, Mano was seen as being the, the, the mixture between the two that could give the Korean Overwatch World Cup team the ability to react to different situations, uh, play different lineups on the fly. Um, I love watching him play. So keep an eye out for Mano for sure on the New York Excelsior. Next, Sabi Olby. Well, he always he's one of those players on uh, stream. You see him, he always seems to be happy, which is wonderful. You always want people to be happy. But he is a mean, mean <laughs> DPS, a mean, mean tracer player um, for sure. Um, he was Korea uh, Overwatch World Cup as well. Also, keep an eye on Libero as well. Kind of a polymath player. Um, in Apex Season 2, um, he played 14 different heroes. So when I say a polymath, he's one of these players who, DPS-wise, um, kind of like your Seagulls and others, because you can show up on so many different heroes. Like, even if you call them a DPS, they're really a flex. They're just so good and able to play so many heroes to a wide sort of standard, a wide and high standard. Uh, so keep an eye out for Libero. Uh, finally, Pine. Uh, now, Pine can actually flex between a bit of DPS and support. Uh, but he saw, he showed a little bit of um, Widowmaker in his back pocket as well in the preseason. So you should keep an eye out for Pine as well. Uh, Excelsior, um, a strong roster, um, pulling together uh, different players very much in a lot of different ways. And I think that they're going to be there or thereabouts this first season of Overwatch League. So... Expect them to have like Korean rivalries as well, like with the London Spitfire, <laughs> with also also with the um, Cell Dynasty as well, in terms of teams. So yeah, another another fully Korean roster pretty much, and I look forward to seeing what they're going to do in season one. Uh, so in terms of tuning in to the Overwatch League, as you watch this video, uh, this is the 9th of January, so the league starts tomorrow, um, and it's going to start tomorrow. Uh, I forget the time temporarily. Uh, but it's going to be uh, an American friendly time. I think the first time uh, might be something like 4 p.m. Uh, I'm going to say 4 p.m. Pacific for the first game. So for the, you guys in the UK, uh, that is, uh, or Europe, that's midnight or midnight plus one. Uh, if you're anywhere east <laughs> of Europe, then that's going to be a massive change for you. Uh, so sorry for my cough. Uh, I'm shooting this in one take. Uh, so if I have a little bit of a drink every now and then, then you can understand why my voice is doing a lot of straight talking. Next up, we are having a look at the Philadelphia Fusion. Now, the Philadelphia Fusion, um, well, uh, because of Philadelphia's sort of physics and nuclear and things history, um, this is owned by Comcast Spec... Uh, it's Spectacor, not Spectator, but Spectacor. Now, that's an organization that owns a whole, whole bunch 
um, of stadiums and event venues around the USA and other places in the world. I like I like the Philly Fusion. Sort of orange nut coming together. Now, the team history. Now, the, the Philly Fusion, we actually haven't really seen properly in action yet, and there's a reason for this. Now, they have players, I think, from nine or de ten different countries in the world. So this, you know, if, if people are calling Boston Uprising like a money ball, money ball combined roster, um, the Philly Fusion have players from just about everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. And to such a degree, they were meant to be playing in the preseason like this kind of orange, black and white diva coming together. Um, they were meant to play in the preseason, but they couldn't actually get it together due to player logistical issues. So they had to pull out from the, uh, the preseason and some other teams in the preseason actually got three games instead of two because the, the fusion couldn't make it. So we're yet to see uh, what they're actually going to do. So when um, the league kicks off, um, a lot of eyes are going to be on the fusion and seeing what they can do. Uh, again, um, just loving the way these colours come together and the, the, the black and white boots with the orange. It's, it's a unique triple colour sort of mixture here that really makes them eye pop and stand out. Um, players to watch on the Fusion. Well, if you've been watching the Overwatch World Cup for the last two years, you'll be familiar, or if you're a fan of FaZe Clan, uh, you'll be familiar with Shadowburn. So Shadowburn has recently been playing for FaZe. He's played two World Cups for Russia. The Russians got to the finals of the first Overwatch World Cup before being uh, smacked down by South Korea. But Shadowburn showed some awesome Genji and DPS. Also keep an eye out for fellow FaZe alumni on the Philadelphia Fusion, Carpe, uh, and his distinctive brand <laughs> of uh, Overwatch Twitch chat memes <laughs> that uh, his, his fans bring. So Carpe plays a, a Korean uh, sort of... Uh, Korean style, uh, before he uh, came to the US, he played a bunch in Apex. Um, he has a bit of Tracer, a bunch of other DPS heroes that he can play as well, that he flexes around. I'm also going to call out two supports on the Fusion, not only because one of them is uh, British, uh, Boombox. Now, Boombox uh, played on E United Stroke Reunited, uh, well in Overwatch Contenders, ex Overwatch Contenders winner. Um, he is a breed of Zen uh, that has ridiculous picking, killing, potential that I've discussed, this uh, Zenyatta Pro style that you'll see played a lot. Almost an additional DPS in terms of the way that they can hold space by rifling away corners. Um, has had some amazing clutch video plays where he just literally picks off two or three, uh, finishes off two or three enemy team players to hold a point or to secure um, an absolute um, you know, devastation of a point in King of the Hill and things. Uh, you'll see some big plays from Boombox this season. Uh, looking forward to seeing him representing the UK as well. Loving this black and white. Look at Arisa's white horns with her black face. So, 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 so good. Um, and a little fusion. Uh, supercharging cannon as well. Ah, oh, sorry. Right, uh, the fusion are, are, are low-key, one of my, uh, my, my favourite colour schemes so far. Uh, they're, they're certainly eye-catching and disconcerting. It's the way that the white sets everything else off. Else off. Back to players. Um, now, one that you might, guys might not have heard of, but Neptuno, um, a Spanish support. Um, I love his Lucio play. And actually, watching um, you know various teams scrimming before the World Cup, uh, there was a Team UK scream, uh, scrim that some of the, I think, Cruz was uh, showing. Uh, on his stream, uh, Cruz, uh, a known United reunited British player, uh, um, played a bunch of supports, pulls out some Genji as well every now and then. Uh, and I saw Neptuno a bunch on that stream as well as on some of the contender streams. Uh, I love like the way he pulls together Lucio, and he's one of those um, right place, right time Lucios um, who really, really pulls everything together for his team. So keep an eye on Neptunio, uh, ne Neptunio, Neptuno for the uh, Philadelphia Fusion. Uh, we will. Keep scrolling down these. Next up is going to be the San Fran Shock. I see that big Roadhog belly there with his white mask. I don't know why I look over. I've looked over. Some people are going to be there in the comments saying, why is Harry looking over that every single time? Every single time you look at the hook and you're let down because you know that it's not the right colour. Sombra looking good there. Symmetra with the Philly Fusion as well. It's the white accents. No white accents on the turret though, which kind of saddens me. Torbjorn. Torbjorn would approve of the Felix. Felix? I'm losing my words. This is what happens when I try and talk for like a long time straight. I'm losing my words. Torbjorn would approve of the Philly Fusion, I feel. The engineering that's going in here. I'm trying to be very, very complete here. Remember, of course, you've got time codes to skip as well. Oh, 
how could I miss the widow? It's just the white trim. I know I've gone along about this white trim, trim quite a bit. <laughs> so your Overwatch games from now onwards are going to just be so colourful. So colourful. It's not even true. Remember, of course, you get a free skin, so you can jump in. Oh, black-headed Zenyatta with the white jewel. That is just awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm not a rich enough man to buy all of these skins, but I will, I will, I will curate some of my favourites. Right, we're getting there, team. We're getting there. I will do the Blizzard skins in a separate video, I think, just so we can be short about that. I can talk a bit about the lore and things to do with them as well. San Francisco Shock. Now, this is NRG's franchise. Now, NRG, I've mentioned a couple of times before, is the roster that had so much fan hype, like of Overwatch esports fans who've been following it for the last year and a half, you know, and indeed since the closed beta before the league, um, as the sort of always the bridesmaid, never the bride team. You know, had Seagull on, had a bunch of... Uh, big players on uh, NRG uh, kind of started again and put together a new roster and they are the San Francisco shock um, but what they do have is an existing core of a team called Team Selfless which did pretty well in the um, North American scene for a while uh, this team actually got three games in the preseason some only got two but uh, the, the shock actually got three uh, and uh, they managed to beat Florida Mayhem they lost to LA Valiant and the London Spitfire so they ended up going one win two losses uh, but they have some really interesting players. They had some actually players, and I've not mentioned some of these for other team lineups, but they actually had a, uh, a player who couldn't actually play uh, because you have to be 18 to play in the Overwatch League, and some players haven't been 18 in the preseason. Uh, some players won't be 18 until actually into the season, but such are the talents or expected talents of some players that some teams have signed contracts with players and actually picked them up um, even though they couldn't play in the preseason or perhaps the beginning of the regular season because they are uh, that excited, shall we say, about their potential. Now, one of these players that you want to watch on the shock is Sinatra. Now, I'm going to file Sinatra under XQC um, and, and, and other players, perhaps Defran as well, for those of you who are uh, experienced with the Overwatch Twitch streaming and competitive scene, as Mercurial Maverick talents. Uh, Sinatra is a ridiculous DPS talent, and we, we saw some of what he could do both on his streams and at various points in the last three to six months. Uh, I want to see him come big for the shock. I want to see him be absolutely ridiculous. I think he was one of the players who couldn't play in the preseason due to being under the age of 18 uh, for the Overwatch League. But I'd love to see what he can do. Um, we couldn't not talk about IDDQD as well. Highly experienced Team Sweden player of a couple of years of Overwatch. Uh, his hit scan DPS, he's known for a lot of McCreeing. You can check him out on Twitch as well. He has streamed a whole bunch. Um, and you need to keep an eye on him as well. A, a veteran experienced DPS who will certainly bring a lot to the shock. Now, the final player I'm going to call out on the shock is because I've got a little personal anecdote on this one, um, kind of accidentally. And it's uh, their Lucio player called Dak. Now, uh, Dak is um, a Spanish um, Lucio and support player. He's going to be shock calling, apparently, for the shock. Um, and he's played that role a bunch before in various lineups. Uh, represented Team Spain, uh, awesome Lucio player. Now, I've got a story about uh, uh, how I kind of recognised Duck from the Overwatch closed beta. Now, this is before my YouTube channel was big at all. I think I was less than 1k subs. I was certainly underneath 3k subs. My, my channel, thanks to all of you kind people, exploded. Um, sort of just when Overwatch, just before Overwatch launched, you know, in, in early 2016 was when my channel really took off. Um, but I was in the closed beta and streaming it a little bit and, and, and recording footage of it and trying it. And I was streaming to like, like my stream was tiny as well. You know, I, I don't really stream. I stream on twitch.tv forward slash Hamio W. Um, and my YouTubing and, and creating videos is always a priority of streaming for me because I firmly believe I can't, I can't, I, time wise, I just can't do both. Uh, um, and spend loads of time on both. I stream from time to time, so please do throw me a follow on there, and maybe once a week I've tried to stream in the past, so you can see me stream there a bit. But anyway, at that time, there was no one uh, watching my stream at all, and my YouTube channel was very, very small. Um, but in walks this guy called Duck, and Duck sort of uh, was there, and he was asking me a million questions about uh, Lucio's wall ride. And I went into Numbani's attacking spawn, and he said, how does Lucio's wall ride work? Uh, can you try riding backwards? Can you try jumping up the wall? Can you try jumping up a corner and telling me if you can jump off different services? Do you get a speed boost um, when you, 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 get up, you fly off one wall to another? You know, um, can you show me this working and how it works? Now, I'm not a very good Lucio. I'm a very, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a slightly, well, I, I play diamond. I'm mid-diamond on average in terms of my rankings. So make it that what you will. I'm, I'm an okay Overwatch player, but I'm by no means amazing. Um, and... 
I was being asked all of these questions in the Overwatch open beta, and I was just sitting there going, oh, I don't think I'm good enough to show you all of the stuff you want. But we literally sat in the... Um, uh, the Numbani attackers spawn in the Numbani airport for like about 20 minutes. I was just streaming me being terrible. Like anyone who, anyone who tuned into my stream must have just been like, what's, 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 what's this guy doing? Why is he just wall riding um, uh, around, uh, around Numbani's uh, attacking spawn? Um, and yeah, and that was Dak. And, uh, and, and uh, yeah, so Dak now uh, plays professionally for the San Francisco Shock. So I, I first uh, had a chat with Dak like a couple of years ago. And uh, what was really, really cool and, and respect to Dak for this uh, is that um, I, I went into his stream on Twitch not too long ago and he was chatting away with people and he was just playing games and I sort of said hello and he was like Hammy I remember you I was like oh my god you know so um you know he remembered me from a couple of years ago as well and I remembered him from that as well I was just like I, I was 99% sure it was him and he was like yeah I remember you you showed me Lucio really bad really no, he didn't say really badly he's nicer than that I said to myself yeah I was terrible but yeah so check out the shock uh, Dak really nice guy um, and yeah, keep an eye out on his Lucianus as well. Okay, we've got two teams to go. Um, that's my little little YouTube and back in the day anecdote. It's hard to believe I've been making Overwatch, Overwatch videos for more than two years. Um, thanks to all of you guys. If you're still here watching this, well done. This is a very long Overwatch video. Um, and I appreciate your commitment and uh, your support. Um, let's have a talk about Cell Dynasty. So Cell Dynasty, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy a skin here. <laughs> because they're black and gold. Their color scheme is just beautiful. Um, and we can talk about Korean Overwatch in general as we do so. So Seoul Dynasty, if the London Spitfire or the New York Excelsior are like Korean teams on tour, then Seoul Dynasty is the hometown heart of Korean Overwatch. And many people see them as being the team to beat. They have Korean Overwatch World Cup players who have won two World Cups in a row coming out of their ears. Um, the core of the roster is the multiple Apex winning team Lunatic High. Uh, and they have supplemented that with pickups from around the Korean Overwatch scene who fit in in a bunch of different ways. Um, many people see them as the team to beat alongside Dallas. And my first Overwatch skin, um, London Spitfire, I'm coming back for you. I'm going to buy, buy you a skin. But it's because it's the black and gold color scheme combined with Diva. So, wow, you'll hear that, you'll hear that sting um, used. Um, that's my skin. That's my skin. Oh, oh, oh I'm so, I, I just zero regret for this purchase. Sell Dynasty Diva. I'm going to be rocking into my next competitive game. So I haven't lost my voice by the end of this video. Uh, you can hear it's going. I'm sorry for the voice cracks. I'll have a, a small sip of water before we continue and talk about Korean Overwatch. Okay, let us continue. So as we scroll down and, and continue. So this team has got, in the most competitive Overwatch League in the world, pre the Overwatch League, this team has been the team that's won it multiple times. They have so many players that me picking a few players to watch is almost criminal because you should watch them and look at them all. If you aspire to playing better Overwatch, whether you play for fun, whether you play competitive, check out the Seoul Dynasty and their players. And indeed, all of the Overwatch League players a lot of them stream. You should really support out the individual players on, on their streams as well. If you want a compiled Overwatch resource for the Overwatch League, who these teams are, who the players are, who the coaches are, there is a really, really good Reddit thread that two Redditors, one of them is called uh, Number One Seagull Fan, um, and the other one's name, I temporarily forget, and that's criminal of me, but I'm going to link the thread in the description below um, at the end of this video as well. So if you just want to read about Overwatch League, um, as well as looking at the official Overwatch League channel on YouTube and the official overwatchleague.com website, these two Redditors have put together an amazing thread. Um, I flicked through it, uh, and a few of the facts that I put in this video are from it. I would 100% recommend going and reading it, and you can drink up everything you want to know about your favorite team, find their players, find their player streams, the Twitches, um, the, the Instagram accounts, everything that you want for your favorite team or for the teams you can find in this one mega thread, as well as individual threads breaking down all of individual players. Um, so full credit to those uh, guys for what is an amazing Overwatch League resource. Uh, back to the Cell Dynasty. Um, so fan expectations from on this team are going to be through the roof. They had an excellent preseason. They thumped the Shanghai Dragons, the last team that I'll talk about after this, the Chinese team. But not only that was a bit of a tough matchup for the Dragons for a lot of reasons, which I will explain for a reason. Like no one would want to be playing Sol Dynasty to start with uh, because they are the team to beat for many, many people. 
Um, they then had a narrow win against the Houston Outlaws. It was it was a little bit um, a little bit closer than I think people were probably expecting. And also they beat the New York Excelsior in sort of a career versus career off. But again, at points that was looking a little bit um, maybe a little bit more sort of dodgy perhaps than people have expected. Black and gold, black and gold, such a beautiful color combination. Again, um, I'm uh, I'm keeping myself keeping myself. I've, I've, I'm 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 locking my wallet. Um, inside my car. No, that's a bad idea. I shouldn't lock my wallet inside my car. I'm going to hide my wallet from myself and pretend that it's not there for all of these beautiful skins. Players to watch um, on the Sol Dynasty. I, well, well, where to begin? Um, I'm going to pick some of my favourites. You could watch any of the players on this team and learn a whole bunch of Overwatch and see some amazing play. They, they were just phenomenal in the preseason. I'm going to pick out some of my favourites. These are not the only players. Look at the gold shoulder pads on this black Reinhardt. Just, oh, oh so, so good. Um, I'm going to pick, like, one of my favourite players to watch is Zumba. Zumba was known as a Zarya player, but then when Zarya fell out of the meta a little bit in the pro scene and D.Va became a little bit more prominent, he picked up D.Va to phenomenal success too. Uh, man's a beastly off tank um, and can main tank pretty nicely too. The Winston Miro, you might have heard if you've watched a lot of my videos on this channel whenever I've talked about esports or kind of pro play. I love Miro's uh, Winston style. Um, people have seen him for a couple of years, like in the first Overwatch World Cup in 2016, he showed a new level of Winston to the world. And since then, his style of Winston has been picked, countered, analyzed um, uh, by everyone else looking to play Winston. Miro, if you see people playing a certain style of aggressive Winston, peeling, jumping around, Miro pioneered that and was well known for that and still does an awesome job on Winston indeed. Uh, the widow making of Fletter, but also the DPS. Like Fletter, um, Fletter's Soldier 76 in the preseason was phenomenal. Uh, he brings immense DPS threat for the dynasty in various different ways. He can zone with widow ridiculously. Um, he can uh, jump onto other DPS and do a horrific job in suppressing the enemy team. By horrific, I mean like it's a horror for the enemy team to play against him, not that he is playing horrifically. Uh, and last but not least, uh, uh, Ryu Zhihong. Um, he is arguably the best support player in the world, but his Zenyata and Ana, his accuracy and timing of his darts and grenades, um, he can keep enemy farers down on his own. He can free up his hitscan DPS due to his accuracy with Arna. And his um, Zen style of play, the sheer aggression, the sheer zoning of holding corners and his accuracy and ability to be an additional DPS resource for his team, as well as keeping the healing and transcendence on point. And let's not forget, you've heard me talk a lot about Zen DPS in this video. If you're not timing your Zen transcendence correctly and zoning it with your team and, uh, you know, countering enemy ults, countering enemy dragon blades, you know, not being baited into transcendencing when your dragon, uh, when the enemy Genji has got dragon blade, you know, Zen is a healer. Let's not forget this. I've talked about this DPS zoning ability of Zenyatas that I love seeing, but that's on top of them doing their healing duty and their, uh, their ulting duty correctly and their discording, uh, and their orbs of harmony too. So don't go all DPS Zen on me guys. Um, that's an additional tool to your kit that will make you even better. You need to make sure you're nailing the basics as well. So yeah, the Cell Dynasty is certainly a team to beat. Last but not least, the red and black, which looks so, so cool as well, of the Shanghai Dragons. Now, as with kind of Korean League, uh, sorry, as with Chinese League of Legends and a lot of games, like, you know, China, uh, as much as being locked off behind its own things like uh, Weibo and, um, you know, uh, being locked off behind its own social networks and China not being able to reach out to the rest of the world in terms of streaming platforms, having its own streaming platforms, you know, um, uh, WeChat and different social networks, uh, you know, with China in multiple different esports games or gaming ga um, games, sort of like competitive gaming. I said gaming games there. You can tell I'm uh, my, my voice is going, my brain's going a little bit here. Uh, the Chinese scenes in various games, unless you have local people there who write out into English or uh, people who can speak Chinese and translate and, and convey that scene to the rest of the world, sometimes their players can be a little bit locked off. Now, the uh, APAC, the Asia Pacific Premier, um, an event that's been run uh, to sort of showcase uh, Asian Pacific Overwatch, uh, has given us a little bit of exposure into the Chinese scene that us Westerners can have a little bit of a look at. Um, uh, my dad's Chinese. Maybe I should get him to do some translating for us. 
We'll see. I don't don't know if you've been to Overwatch. Ah, oh, look at that red and yellow, like this dragon coloured. Yeah, I need I need a, need a Chinese. Um, I need a need a I need need some of these uh, Chinese Shanghai dragon skins as well. Very very sweet. So uh, the Shanghai dragons are owned by Netties. Now Netties actually run World of Warcraft, and like you might not know that to run certain games in China, you need government permission. And like take World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft is has a specific Chinese edition where um, there are laws in China. For, for games so like you're, you're not allowed to show certain things around like skulls and zombies and and bones and things like that there are specific um laws in china um around what visual content you can show so world of warcraft in china for example um needed specific adaption and is run by a specific company in china that has chinese government sort of approval the netties are that company so these this is who owns the shanghai dragons now the shanghai dragons are pretty much the LGD gaming roster that I've only seen in action a couple of times in various VODs. Now, AG, LGD have been slugging it out at the top of Chinese Overwatch for quite a period of time. Um, for those who are more familiar with the Chinese scene, and I will 100% credit various Reddit threads, the guys over at forward slash r forward slash competitive Overwatch as well, and people who follow competitive Overwatch in more detail than I, I've not seen too much into the Chinese scene. But this team is at the top of the Chinese scene, but it's not the recognized most strong now the chinese world cup team is comes into play here uh, the chinese world cup team that qualified for the world cup was mostly players from a recognized chinese powerhouse ro uh, roster called miraculous youngsters um, the actual team that went to blizzcon 2017 was actually lgd gaming and a bunch of other people and the reason for that is because like a big bunch of the miraculous youngsters guys couldn't actually get visas um, to go, and this is a, a problem for a bunch of Chinese players. It happens in Dota. Uh, they couldn't get American visas to go to BlizzCon um, 2017 to actually represent China in the World Cup. So almost one Chinese team uh, played in the qualifiers for the Overwatch World Cup, and another entirely different team almost played in the um, actual World Cup finals that they qualified for. So there is a feeling amongst those who follow Overwatch Esports, and I've followed the World Cup very, very closely for the last few years, that we didn't see perhaps what China could truly be capable of at the last World Cup. And this roster does not have a bunch of miraculous gaming players. So is this the best of China? There are a lot of great players in this team, and we shouldn't undercook it. But one wonders if we'll see maybe another Chinese franchise in future and see, like like we've seen of the Korean players, a variety of Chinese players popping up in future. We can see a bit of miraculous gaming and see how they fare. Uh, in the preseason, well, this roster, two of their players showed up, like literally just before the first game started, very, very jet lagged. Um, I've already got down to mercy. I can't go backwards. I can't go backwards. That, I, again, um, red, black, this red, yellow, black and gold sort of orangey combo. Uh, I love the look of it. Uh, um, for certain heroes, I'm going to have to pick up some of these, I think. Um, so two of their players showed up to the Overwatch preseason. Uh, when I talk about the preseason, it was um, in December 2017. If you want to get your fill of Overwatch, if you want to see some of these teams in action and some of these players in action, go to overwatchleague.com and you can see all of the VODs of the preseason are there. You can just watch them all on the website. You can see full games, full production, um, full analysis. Uh, the production was actually really, really good um, in terms of how the games were conveyed and spectated. And I know that will improve even more um, as... Uh, the team go like there's a specific spectator new client that they put in place for the preseason you see overlays you can see slow motion replays uh, and a whole bunch of good stuff there too so if you're wanting to watch these plays go to overwatchleague.com there's like hours of matches already there that you can just drink up if one of these teams are interested in if any of these players interest you go and watch them go and have a look um, over on overwatchleague.com i cannot encourage that enough um, because um, it is always awesome and you know what time zone wise we're not always going to be able to check out all of the games live. OverwatchLeague.com is your place for watching these teams um, and more, as well as Twitch after the, it's happened. So, the story of Shanghai Dragons. Um, the Overwatch, um, their Overwatch preseason was tough um, because um, they didn't actually have much practice time either, as well as a couple of their players turning up jet, la jet lagged. So, they did not have much scrimming time, scrimmaging time. You'll hear people talk about scrimming. That's practice time as a full roster. You can have in house scrims, you can play against other teams. So, not really a full reflection of their potential. And no one wants to play Sul Dynasty to start with. They also had a close, close, uh, close, close loss 
that could be a closs if I'm abbreviating. They had a close loss to the Boston Uprising as well. So we have not seen the most of the Shanghai Dragons. Um, do not take their losses as, as a reflection of their potential. Um, players to watch. Uh, the first one I'm going to shout out is Dia, because I've seen a little bit of him. Dia actually has an interesting story. He was accused of aimbotting, actually, during the Overwatch Asia Pacific. I think it might have been 2016 series. So he is a, a history player uh, in the Overwatch APAC and Chinese scene. Uh, Blizzard actually themselves, I think, came out and said that they, they, they proved him uh, to be fine. Um, I said he wasn't cheating at all. Uh, his long-range hitscan DPS in preseason was nuts at points. He was a serious threat. So keep an eye out for his McCrean soldier in particular. Finally, I'm going to shout out Five King from the little Lucio that I've seen him play. He's a real dancer. He's an all-action Lucio in 50 different places at once. Uh, very highly regarded by those who have seen him in more action. So keep an eye out for Five King too. Okay, that is a, a long old vid. Um, as you can see, uh, tomorrow uh, the uh, Overwatch League is going to be starting. Wednesday the 10th, keep an eye out from 4pm Pacific. Uh, you can pick up the VODs and it's going to be uh, played in a few days in a row for the next few days. So uh, the 10th, 11th, um, 12th and I think 13th, we're going through to Saturday as well. So we've got four days of Overwatch League ahead of us. Um, if you're looking to watch the London Spitfire, check them out later in the week. The entire lineup is over on overwatchleague.com. I cannot wait for the season to get going. So thank you very much. You can see Overwatch League has got its own special spot in the roster. Thank you very much for tuning in to all of this. Um, what do you think of the skins? Are you going to be watching Overwatch League? Who are you rooting for? Do you let me know in the comments below. I'm going to go through the Blizzard skins and Blizzard World, which are apparently already live uh, with this patch as well, in a separate video to keep an eye out for that. Uh, if you like this video, do throw a like, subscribe, comment. Would you like to see me doing more Overwatch analysis, esports, perhaps interviews? Do let me know if your thoughts in the comments. This is a bit of a trial channel uh, video. Um, I love my esports. I know you guys are mostly here for the lore, uh, a little bit of news that I do and other things. Um, I will be expanding the Overwatch content that I do on this channel this year uh, and perhaps doing other lore content for other games as well. Uh, take a look at my community tab for decisions and discussions around that. And keep an eye out for uh, having a look at the Overwatch League skins as well, which I'll throw up in a separate video too. Cheers for tuning in. I've been Hammy and take it easy. See you for the Overwatch League. Can't wait.